do it live. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Things suck. You see, KYJ, things have changed just a little bit since the last time you were here. I think you should see your oculus. Nothing wrong with my feet. I'm talking about your eyes. I can even make my ass do tricks, watch this. You have any idea where you are? You're in the jungle, baby! This is WCW! That's right! Hold on! For over 10 years, the world's number one source for professional wrestling news and information. And once again, here's your hosts, Damian Nelson, Frank Cosentino, and the man they call Meathead. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com. Thank you for your patience after that exciting NBA basketball game <laughs> between the uh, Orlando Magic and the Boston Celtics. David Hero has arrived. This yeah. is the Pro Wrestling Report. Thank you yeah. very much for tuning in. Damian Nelson sitting here with the man they call Meathead, David Octavius Hero. And the Skull Crusher, Rashi Brown. What up? Hiya. <laughs> We're live at PWRshow.com and also a live video feed at PWRshow.com right now as well. You can join the conversation tonight, all night long. The number 1-800-990-ESPN, 1-800-993-776, or all of the world at, I'm sorry, or locally at 276-3776-276-ESPN. Well, Damien, they could do it all over the world if they yeah, use their they, country code, right? Honestly. Gentlemen, last night was WWE over the limit on pay-per-view. And David Hero, I think you summed it up best when you said that that show did what to your weekend? It ruined it. Your whole weekend out the window because Absolutely. of WWE over the limit. I was going great. All right. And then all of a sudden, that three hours of nonsense. Well, let's talk about the pay-per-view match It was by crap. Match, and let's whoa, start off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. I'm the serious. opening contest, which was Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Meathead, your thoughts on that matchup? You know, it was probably the best match of the night. But it's still, I guess, you know, it's kind of like putting perfume on a pig because it really didn't make a difference in the entire night. David Harrell, six minutes of action, saw Kofi Kingston become the new Intercontinental Boom. Champion. You know what? Finally, good for Kofi. You know, been demoted, sent to SmackDown. Nah. And now he gets to beat, you know, the chosen one. The rumor he has, has been, has, he's one. fallen out of favor right now. He's no longer the chosen one. Drew McIntyre. Because he's not getting any kind of response from anybody. It's just... <laughs> and the only good thing about Drew McIntyre right now is his song. It's a cool tune. Really? Uh, it's what I like. Really? I love hearing the music. So say goodbye. Because he, he's monotone, like Cena. I mean, he's slow. that slow methodical thing works for some guys. It's not working for Drew McIntyre at all. It works for Batista. Batista works it hard. But McIntyre's is terrible. Or as Charles Barkley, basketball, says, oh, that's terrible. After the matchup, um... Uh, Drew McIntyre was uh, not so happy with Teddy Long, Theodore R. Long. Thaddeus? A uh, reference to the picture on the wall that we always see from Teddy Long's office, and that was that of Martin Luther King. Uh -oh. People saying that wasn't necessary in the uh, promo. Why? Why? Because Why? Saying, a lot of the feedback we got was that it wasn't necessary. No real reasons given aside from what may be, might be obvious. It was in Teddy Long's office. A bit of a sensitive topic. Maybe Teddy Long likes Martin Luther King. Anybody ever think of that? It was the Why fact is everybody that... so sensitive all the no, time? No, no, it I wasn't know. the sensitivity it's of so it. Annoying. It was, was it necessary? No one's upset about it. Who or... cares? All right, I'm just should throwing they have it out a, there. Should they have had a picture of Elmo? And then tickle the picture? Big Bird? Whoa, whoa. I guess maybe Abraham Lincoln. Ah, yeah, there you go. You know, he used to be a wrestler. Yeah, I know. Next matchup was Ted was DiBiase. Was he a bare-knuckled one? Ted DiBiase, who was with Virgil in a new suit, versus R-Truth. R-Truth, in seven minutes, defeats Ted DiBiase. Dave Hero, your thoughts? I really have no thoughts on it. <laughs> Ser seriously. You did you, thought our, did you predict our truth in that matchup? Mm, no, I'm sure. I, I I think I was 0-3 for the first three matches. Who would have thought all these babyfaces were going to win, you know? It was a 100% babyface pay-per-view. 
It was the Drizzlins, man. Oh, I'm telling what you. What sense does it make, though, for our truth to have defeated Ted DiBiase when our truth? Well, obviously, our truth tonight. Well, obviously, now we know why he beat Ted DiBiase last night because now he became the number one contender. No, he's not. But, he's but, the, but, the United States I champion. I didn't finish. Was he the number? He one became contender. a number one contender for the U.S. title match. Mm. But how many times has WWE not necessarily cared about that? You see someone lose the night before, even in the same match for the same title, they come back the next night and perhaps you know, win it. On, honest to God, watching last night's pay per view, I'm convinced they had no idea what they were booking, <laughs> and all they were doing was setting up stuff for the next month pay per view. Yeah. None you of know, it made sense. You know, and to Damien's point there, too, how many times have they buried a guy consistently over and over, and then out of nowhere he right. catches in his money in the bank belt. Right. Jack Swagger. Like, like they, CM Punk. Yeah, they, they bury him, and then when they're not mad at him anymore, they try to push him. And yeah. Then, and then the Hot fans, shot him the right fans through. are supposed to remember, too, or forget, too, right? Yeah. Three months is the, the rest Damien of the fans line. forget everything. Yeah, not a, they do. No, they don't. No, yeah, they, they don't. do. No, they don't. Look how they cheer Randy Orton right now. No, that's but Randy Orton. Randy Orton buried. was a never heel. We're talking so. like Kofi. Kofi will never be as hot as he was. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. When he was never. going against Randy Orton. Exactly. Post. You know, you've been Damien's just distraught because Cody wasn't on the pay per view. No, no, right. no, no. Well, that Cody versus Sheamus match had to get taken off because um, they needed Sheamus at the end, and they didn't want Cody yeah. to potentially hurt him earlier but, in right. the show. No, I heard that uh, they had to send Cody out to California because they had to rescan him for his new action figures that aren't selling. <laughs> <laughs> Rey Mysterio versus CM Punk. It was a hair versus Ray joining the Straight Edge Society match. Which we've seen before, right, Damien? And we would see CM Punk lose that matchup and lose his locks of Most hair. of it. Who's to say you know what? That was match. the best match on the show. For about 14 minutes, a solid matchup from what all the indications are. But a lot of people not expecting that CM Punk would have lost that match. Also, they never uh, have still identified who the masked assailant is, the straight edge you know, mask. Dave uh, HDHHS has an idea of who it is. You know, he the hottest at selling T-shirt in PWR show history. He, he looked at the guy's feet and said, I think I know whose boots those are. Joey they, Mercury. Because the, you've kept his boots under your bed? Is that why you recognize the shoes? Or? I just know Joey along, Mercury. Along with X-Pac. <laughs> no wonder. X-Pac. The you Hart, guys got to leave him out of this. The Hart Dynasty, uh, David Hart Smith and Tyson Kidd going up against The Miz and Chris Jericho as The Miz and Jericho tried to get Mizico. back their unified tag team championship belts. David Hero, your thoughts on this 10 or so minute matchup that saw the Hart Dynasty retain those tag titles. I thought it was a great win for the Hart Dynasty. To go over two successful singles wrestler, it elevated them as the tag team champions. Meet had your thoughts. Uh, that was my uh, popcorn break. Rashi, I went up for a combo bath. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. Rashi I love Brown. Well, Miz. then let me ask Rashi, sure. who actually can give some perspective on it. Rashi, your thoughts on the Hart Dynasty, D.H. Smith and Tyson Kidd as a team and as tag team champions. We saw them squash uh, Vladimir Kozlov and William Regal on Raw tonight, and then we saw them get attacked by a new debuting tag team. But what's your perspective as a wrestler of that tag team? Is that Pixie Dust? I I have no idea. I really haven't watched them wrestle as a tag team, so I can't give you an educated opinion on them right now. All right. I'm sorry. I can tell you that D.H. Smith and Tyson Kidd as a team. They do move very fluidly together. They're they're a cohesive unit. They're actually, you know, instead of throwing singles wrestlers together over and over, yeah. they're actually a they're a team. I mean, they came up as a team. You could tell they've they're worked the together. They're the only real team left. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, because the crime times are done. Except and, for the Usos. Yeah. Well, that's a new team. So now they have four tag teams in the Ooh. WWE. Uh, we're going to take your phone calls. The phone lines are full right now. We want to hear your thoughts on WWE Over the Limit on pay-per-view last night. We've got New Jersey, Detroit, and Orlando waiting on hold as we go into the next matchup, which was Randy Orton versus Edge, a match that I believe Frank Cosentino, the cause, sat in this very room last week and said it would end in a double DQ or countout, and that it did. <laughs> Wait Unbelievable. a minute. Wait a minute. I said that first. Shut up. And then he's like, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so you guys. Uh, All right, David Hero can get the credit. Come on, give me a little bit of credit here once in a while. 
nah, because you take too much. <laughs> Your thoughts on this matchup, and specifically the finish, David Hero? Man, you know what? I will give Randy Orton this. He gutted it out because he was in a ton of pain to finish that match. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Randy Orton announced tonight as a participant in the fatal four-way match so is he really injured we've got a, most, well, a lot of evidence showing that he is what what was the injury uh he was a little bit too aggressive in pounding the apron uh, as he was preparing for the rko and may have reports are a broken arm could I mean, be a hairline fracture like too. collarbone or something wasn't it he may have re-aggravated the collarbone injury as well or, or, collar dis- or, or dislocated his shoulder yeah. he, yeah. something happened on his arm well a uh, close fist is illegal in matches anyway so Hey, well, if it's a if it's a like a re-aggravating injury, mm-hmm. I think he'd be okay before the pay per view. There were a bunch of tweets going out about that injury last night, weren't there? Karma. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things I said was, does that make him injury prone? You know, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Jack Swagger versus the Swagger. Big Show. Jack oh. Swagger retains the World Heavyweight Championship it's in Jack Swagger, a match your that was champion. less than five minutes. A World Heavyweight Championship match on a pay-per-view was less than five minutes. And what did it do? It didn't do anything. No, I mean, it went to a DQ. Yeah. But, okay, what are they going to do? Have Big Show beat Swagger? <laughs> Have Swagger beat Big Show? Why did they book that match, period? I know. Because they had to get, you know, they had to get a payday I for mean, cause, Big Show. Because Big Show's got his change now of attitude. Now he's happy and laughing around again, and he's, oh, oh, I forgot, Big Show's a boxer because he punches people. <laughs> oh, terrible. Terrible. Horrible. Terrible. Oh, my gosh, the Magic beat the Celtics tonight? <laughs> I had no idea. Most times you don't. The next <laughs> matchup was actually a ladies' matchup, a divas match, as Eve, Eve. took on Mike. I believe and in Eve. Eve won and retain the title in that matchup. Meet has your thoughts on the Divas match. Well, technically, that would limit. be the popcorn match for me, the one that, where I got up and got something to eat, you know, Again? and got ready for Technically, it would be, but I sat and watched this match, and uh, it was uh, kind of hard to watch. <laughs> Eve is not hard to watch. Man. She <laughs> seems like a nice woman. She's a She's very a attra- sweetheart. Me She's head. very attractive. Yeah, break it down. She's very attractive. But as far as her in-ring wrestling ability, you can tell I have a now. no, 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 no. <laughs> Break it down. Keep on. I have a hard time watching her perform in the ring. All right. Period. Now, thank you. It has nothing to do with looks or beauty, right? Zero. Okay. Now, if you saw a great woman wrestler in that ring and she wasn't beautiful, you'd watch the match, correct? I've watched those matches. Thank you. Hmm. I love I, those matches. I, I mean, if they're moving. R B H S. Hey. Let me let me give you an example. I'm not saying anything against Amada, but she can wrestle. Right. I like watching her and wrestle. I like watching her. Mm-hmm. Amada is attractive. Roxy, at one attractive. point. Attractive. Okay, they're um, they're not even for yeah. There's nothing against them, but I'll watch them. I'll watch them work. What the main event? We're, what 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 we're saying is, if you want a good looking girl, look at a magazine or something else. But mm-hmm. on my wrestling pay per view that I spent exactly. my money on. I want good wrestling. And you know what ended up being? And Trish Stratus was one that was like that to start with. She ended up learning how to mm-hmm. work in the ring. Yep. That was a rarity right there. I mean, yep. to watch a Trish Stratus match, one, she was working. Two, if she was working against Lita, who was also attractive yep. and could do a little stuff. I mean, she was kind of spotty, you know, as far as not do really a little in ring. Stuff. Uh, she was solid. She oh, wasn't. Eve uh, has gotten a lot better in the past six she, months. She sure has. Okay. But so... according to Dave, she's no... Uh, Alicia Fox, who was the winner like tonight, Kurt Henning. Whatever. I was just enjoying this. I'll keep going if you want. I was hoping you would. And another thing. <laughs> <laughs> now the next matchup, the main event matchup, was John Cena versus Batista in oh, an boy. I Quit match. Uh, and That's where Dave Hero tapped out. You got to continue to I give props. Quit. I quit. You got to continue to give props to Batista, who has been very strong as of late, especially on the microphone. Last night, he would quit before receiving the attitude adjustment off the top of a vehicle through the stage at uh, WWE Open. I believe, again, I didn't hear what it was or get a good look at it, but I believe it was the Dodge Charger. Amazing looking vehicle, by the way. 
David Hurl, this matchup, you did indeed, as you were handling the PWR Twitter duties. <laughs> duty. Uh, <laughs> you said duty. You tapped out. I <laughs> did. Before Batista in this matchup. It was brutal. It made no sense. It was just nonsense. We all knew Batista wasn't going to win. John Cena got beat up, but all of a sudden, miraculously, he was, you know, Super Cena again. And dun, 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 it just was not. It, you know what? Dun, you know what it was? Dun, dun, the whole show wasn't even fun to watch. And then that main event made it that much worse. What are you trying to say, fella? <laughs> you know what? He's the guy that saved the show for me. When Seamus came out and kicked Cena in the head, I felt better. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded a bit sinister. <laughs> it sure it's did. You know truth. what? Uh, I felt better. So it was worth the money? It was worth the chicken, grilled chicken sandwich I paid for to watch it. Yeah, but <laughs> unfortunately you still had chicken grease down your face because you kept asking for a napkin and never yeah, got one. Yeah. You yeah. do know you can follow the Pro Wrestling Report on Twitter. Our Twitter account is PWR. Show some comments from last night's uh, pay-per-view from our Twitter account. People sending this into us, the user by the name of OMF Jits J, it looks like. Over the limit was god-awful. The voice beat says they should have called it WWE Overboard. Uh, Beach Burn Bob said, so much for face versus heel. This pay-per-view has the crowd chanting, who cares? Hope the replay edits the boring really? chance over the limit equals overrated. So, uh, not very favorable feedback on that pay per view last night. Well, Damien, finally, I... Ian Stewart Go Seven ahead. says, "Do you think the finish of Over the Limit would have been far better if Desmond Wolf and Ric Flair ran down and fell in the hole?" <laughs> but Damien asked the question that you ask about pay per views. I don't know if that's what you were going to do. Was it worth the money? This pay per view, thirty four, thirty five days. Was it worth the it money? Forty four ninety five, I believe, right? It wasn't worth anything. It really wasn't. It you was, know what, it was Dave? A disappointment. If I would have came and watched that show with you like you asked me to, I probably would have punched you in the face. Wow! Wait <laughs> a and minute. And took your chicken sandwich. Thanks, pal. Because you were angry <laughs> at the show or date? Making <laughs> making me waste my time. Well, you know, you just wanted to hang out, man. You know. The, well, you know what? I tweeted one thing last night. I said, you know what? This show, the this is terrible. The only thing that's making it worth it was the company. Hanging out with Dave, hanging out with Absolutely. Frank, hanging out Dave with Mrs. Frank. Thing. Yeah, I was entertaining. <laughs> Let's go to the phone lines to get some feedback and uh, also seeking your feedback in the Chatmosphere at PWRShow.com, the live chat accompanying this live show. Uh, if you want to join us on the phone lines to talk about WWE Over the Limit, the number 276-3776 or all over the world at 1-800-990-3776. So feel free to give us a call. Let's go to our first caller, who is Rob from out of New Jersey. Rob, you're live. Jersey Rob. Congratulations on your uh, wedding, meet, meathead, man. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, uh, have, a good, have a really good one. Remember, be <laughs> happy. Don't have, you know what I mean? Be happy. Don't be right. Oh, but, no, 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 no. I'm going to be right and happy. Oh. Uh, hope, whatever. Hope, hope you better get that retainer, listen, then. She's listening right now. I'm going to be right and happy. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Right-handed and happy. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a rim shot for that? That was David. Oh. Everybody. <laughs> hey guys, um, I want to talk to you just three three quick things, just real quick. Um, number one, um, the title of the pay per view is it a kind of ironic that 11 years ago we had a bit of a uh, an accident with yeah. this name and uh, bringing it back, just changing the limit from Edge. Do you think it's kind of uh, ironic about the name? I don't think so. Mm, John Cena loves his hot rod cars, and he got to show them off on Sunday. Okay. Number and they were in Detroit, by the way, the Motor City. Okay. Number two um, is about uh, John, uh, or I'm sorry, Joey Mercury. If he is the, you know, quote unquote, you know, mystery guy, do you think, uh, how would you feel about him coming back? And, uh, do you guys still remember that bloodshed eye that he oh, got, yeah. you know, from a long time ago? Oh, yeah. Indeed. That was Armageddon 2000, 2005, I think, six maybe. Yeah, yeah that was bad. That was a bloodbath. Mm-hmm. That was. But uh, the, my third question is actually, and I and I hate to change the subject, but uh, David, uh, I think it would actually sort of kind of be kind of cool for the wrestling fans, especially for PWR fans, because I know, like, you know, you have a lot of heat between you and – and I hate to change the subject, but uh, the Pope. Okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking this would be actually kind of a great idea, for, especially for the fans as well. What if you actually had a live chat 
with the Pope on 540 ESPN and actually discuss your differences you and know compromising. What? We've reached out to him, and he told me no. Really? Yeah. He won't do it. Oh, wow. See, this wow. is why. Well, I think only because, you know what I mean, A, I'm not trying to say that you hate the Pope. Or I don't know. hate the Pope. He just hates and B, on if the you, Pope. Yeah, B, if there's a, you know, you want to buy this bridge that he's selling, too, he can go ahead and uh, set that up for you. Rob out of New Jersey, thank you very much for that call. This is uh, 540 ESPN, also WAUK Jackson, and we're going to go to Dwayne out in Detroit. Dwayne, you are live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. How's it going, fellas? Good. Tremendous. Uh, well, I want like two. Uh, I got three things I want to discuss. Uh, first of all, I thought the pay per view was it was mediocre. Were I you there? Gonna, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, or, no, were you at the pay per view live? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, three things. Uh, the over the limit pay per view was it was mediocre. I didn't really care for Did it. Did you much. have a seat at the pay per view? Did you watch it live? No, I didn't, I didn't go to it. You I were not okay. at Ford Field. No. Okay. No, I, wa- I watched it at home. Thank God. Um, but uh, I thought the pay per view was mediocre. Uh, the CM Punk Ray Mysterio match, I think they should have had Mysterio lose, you know, to kind of draw the story out a little bit more. Draw it out more? Yeah. Yeah, I think I that's mean, going to SummerSlam, it's, it's, actually. They it's, it's, one, it's one of the good angles that they actually have. They could have done fun things with that, I think. Who yeah. says it's over though? Just because he got his head shaved doesn't mean it's over yet. You're right. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Um, other than that, uh, uh, the last thing I want to I want to speak on is the. Uh, I was watching Raw, and the whole guest whole thing to me is is, is stale. It's, it's getting stale. It was getting? good for a minute, but I think they need to drop it and just stick with the whole, you know, GM thing. Mm. All right. Thank you for that call, Dwayne, out in Detroit, and. Uh... You know, the sentiment has been fairly consistent regarding WWE over the limit on pay-per-view, the sentiment. Sentiment, oh, yeah. However, we did, uh, we, on our Twitter account, we did just receive a tweet from a user by the name of Click Brandon. Over the Limit was a good pay-per-view. I don't know what you guys were watching last night. Um, his meds are scheduled to wear <laughs> off tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Let's go down to Orlando, Florida, the MCO. Glenn, you're live. Glenn on line three, you're live. Glenn, the guy we want to talk to, you're live. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> Glenn. Yo. Long Keith time. Egg. What's up? What's up? Glenn, you have a question for us? Yeah, I do. All I right. Have, I have um, two questions and one comment. Uh, my qu- my first question is, I heard a comment on uh, the Internet this past week saying Uh-oh. that that the only reason Vicky Guerrero is hated that much as she is is because she's kind of like spitting on Eddie Guerrero's legacy? No. 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 As a matter of fact, the opposite. We've talked about it on this very program that uh, the fact that Vicky Guerrero is there working, it's kind of a way to pay her back. You know, she obviously was kind of left without Eddie to, you know, take care of the family. Dave, you mentioned it too at WrestleMania. She got her spot to shine. She got the chance to, you know, celebrate, you know, Eddie's life by doing the hog splash, as Linda Kay called it, uh, <laughs> and, you know, in the match. So, no, it's, Vicky's not there to put Vicky Guerrero over. She's there to earn a living for her family. All right. Now, I have a comment concerning Travel Guerrero. What do you guys think, um, your thoughts on Travel Guerrero taking on Eddie Guerrero's live shoot and steel gimmick since not doing anything with him? Would you guys want to see it? Thank you for that call, Glenn, down in Orlando. I think that uh, nobody's going to care. Think, no. Well, I, I, contrary, I think no. they would. What? No. However, no. I don't think stop it. I, I think they would, but Concur. I don't think that's the place to go. I don't think that that's that. To the first point of, he Glenn, should go back to Kerwin White. <laughs> he should, yeah, because that works. No, I think people would enjoy the nostalgia. He of it, can but be I a so cheating dumb. golfer. So dumb. But I also think it would be a bit uh, a bit much for uh, WWE to allow anyone to utilize that character due to the circumstances that, that surround it. So, Glenn, thank you very much for calling. We're going to take a timeout. We'll take more of your phone calls. We've got James and Matt waiting on hold. You can join us, the number 276-3776, or all over the world at 1-800-990-3776. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. 540 ESPN. 540 ESPN.
Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com and PWRShow.com. It is Monday, May 24, 2010. 2010? I've been typing 2011 all day. Really? What are you know. thinking about next year? Uh, not sure yet. WrestleMania? You know Hotline? why? You know why? Because last night's pay-per-view was so long. It took us like in 2011. <laughs> we're talking about WWE over the limit. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about the very eventful WWE Raw from tonight. Uh, however, David Hero, I understand that uh, the uh, last week on primetime, we released the design of the all-new PWR DHHS shirt. The hottest selling shirt in PWR show history. <clears throat> Just go to PWRshow.com. How does that make you feel? You know what? Pretty ecstatic. Really? Love it. So it's washing away this paint from last night's pay-per-view? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but just the fact, knowing that, you know, people want to support the So H- you're saying H- it's outsold I'm a Mark? Yes. It outsold uh, Fire Me, I'm Already Fired? Yes. Heel? Yes. Face? It's, but will it outsell Vintage Fish? Well, that ah, could be interesting. That I, could be I interesting. think you should just give one away for free. Well, Rashi, how about we do you one better? Oh. I like to spread the love and make sure everybody has an opportunity. I like to spread the love, too. And uh, we're going to do, uh, right now on Twitter, we're going to push it out, a promo code for 15% off. Ooh. 15% off the DHHS, DHHS shirt for the next 24 Whoa. hours. That's going out on the PWR Twitter uh, account as we speak. That's part of my cut, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. Your percent is sacred. Okay. I mean, it's, it's taking care of certain the history of the show. We don't have the need to give it away for 15% off, but heck, we're going to do it anyways. Thank you to all of you joining us at the PWR chat room at PWRshow.com in the chat atmosphere. Uh, we are going to now go back to the phone lines, and you can join them by calling 276-3776 or all over the world at 1-800-990-3776. Let's go to James down in Houston. James, you are live. Good evening, gentlemen. How's it going this evening? Good oh. evening, James. Um, yeah, as for over the limit, <laughs> I was sitting at a bar, and um, a friend of mine made a really good point, and I'm going to ask you guys this. Has there ever been a good WWE pay-per-view in the month of May for the past, oh, like, 10 years? absolutely. 10 years? I don't know. Judgment uh, Judgment Day with Undertaker returning as the biker was in that was 2000? Like, that was like, yeah, Ten years ago. Okay, Steve. Oh. Answered your question, James. Gotcha. <laughs> um. So and also, um, I. It, that's the perfect definition of a throwaway pay per view. Um. I don't think there was any redeeming qualities about that show. Um. And as for the PWR T-shirt, uh, those are good looking T-shirts. Uh. As for Damien or Meathead or Rossi, are you guys gonna have any T-shirts coming down the pipeline soon? I do have a T-shirt. It's uh. My pain is coming. So fresh. I believe that's available at ROHWrestling.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's okay. actually way cooler than Dave's stupid shirt. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay, and then one last thing I would like as a request for Damien, if you could inform the viewers of what WCW is, oh. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, guys. James, All right, man, you, you just went from cool to fool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rashi. I knew ah, I liked you. That has a nice ring to it. From cool cool to the fool. fool. WCW that's is Rashi's AD. next T-shirt. Oh. Professional wrestling organization that actually should that be Meathead's next T-shirt by from Cool to Fool WWE <laughs> in 2001 after subsequently going out of business. Hit him coming, hit him going. Let's go to line two. Thanks, James down in Houston for calling, and let's go to Idaho. Matt, you're live. Hello, I'm live. Yeah, you're live, Matt. Idaho. Oh my gosh, so cool. Yeah, I'm in Idaho. I found you guys just randomly on YouTube one time, and have been a listener for I don't know a good six, seven months, I guess. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk about Over the Limit, a couple things about it. I saw it. It's been a long time since I sat through an entire pay-per-view. I saw WrestleMania 16 kind of off and on mm-hmm. just because there was a few matches I want to watch. And then this one, uh, watching it, I, I enjoyed what I saw for the most part. Like, it definitely, I think, uh, you see, I took a long break from watching wrestling. I went from literally about two years after um, WCW went out of business and the NWO got into the WWE mm-hmm. and then, just about the last day the NWO was in the WWE, I stopped watching wrestling until up about five months ago. Okay. So, so I, your I, five I, months, your five months coming up, you know, since you've been back, what have you thought of the product, the PG as they call it, product? I've never thought of it being more extreme than a lot of the kind of jokes that I've never really found funny, anyways. 
they've gone, they pushed the envelope for storylines before and stuff like that. And, you know, the Attitude Era was its own era, and it'll never be like that again. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I miss about the Attitude Era was not the way they presented the storylines. It was the storylines in general. I thought they were a little juicier and something you could really enjoy a little more in, instead of this, mm -hmm. I'm the good guy, I'm the bad guy. I just thought there was a little more, more depth. And that's all led by Super Cena, the monotone superhero fight, you know, eat your vitamins, say your prayers. The attitude yeah. era was when yeah. everyone had a chance to win. Yeah. You know, and the only and the, and the biggest thing about that, though, about John Cena, um, I remember when Bret Hart first came back to the WWE, It was I think it was either that night or the next Monday night, where John Cena gave a really big, uh, long speech about, you know, living in the moment, and he does it for the moment. Mm -hmm. At that point, I thought John Cena was good. Like, John Cena does have a hidden passion for wrestling, I think, completely. Oh, and but I it's think crushed. Sadly, but I, I just don't think it, it really comes through completely when he's, one, wrestling, and two, delivering anything that is more scripted than something he really feels passionate about. You know, Matt, i got to say, though, no matter what, no matter what the fans say in general, John Cena's laughing all the way to the bank. It's the truth. It's the truth, and it's the sad reality. Yeah. The hard truth. Mm -hmm. All the way to the bank. are doing that. Yep. But the thing I wanted to say about uh, Over the Limit was about the match between Rey Mysterio and CM Punk. And I'd like to first state, I am not a fan of CM Punk at all. I think his go-to-sleep move is kind of lame and kind of dangerous from a, from a wrestling uh, standpoint, just as, a, I guess, more of a fan because I've never done it myself. But I've just never found it to be a very awesome finisher like some people say it is. But... um. That whole match, I, I, I was on pins and needles for that whole match. Even though I basically knew Rey Mysterio was going to win because of the angle of what, the, what was, what was the, on the line for the match, right up until that very end when Rey Mysterio won, like when he hit the 619 and missed the splash, I, I, was, I held my breath. I was surprised. And when he uh, then repinned him and got the 1 2 3, I was on that 1 2 3, like 1 2 3. And my question for you guys when was the last time you really felt? that passionate towards the match that, hmm. you know, they do the one, two, and you're like holding your breath. Is it going to be three or are they going to kick out? Actually, it's not a one, two, three that I have mine for, but you know, while you were saying that it led me to the one match that I can remember right off the top of my head, at least the most recent one, it was Chris Benoit winning the Royal Rumble. Big but Chris Benoit. What's that? Oh, so I didn't hear who, who, who won the Royal Rumble. Uh, when Chris Benoit won the Royal Rumble, I remember sitting watching that live and I actually became a wrestling fan again. You know, I, you know, I, pushed away all the you know stuff that we do on the radio show and the stuff that we do in a TV show. And I was a wrestling fan, pure wrestling fan, watching that, rooting for Chris Benoit, and excited, thinking, oh, my God, one of my favorite wrestlers is about to win the Royal Rumble, and he's going to have a chance to win his first ever you know WWE yeah. championship. So that was my moment. Awesome. Matt, I would have to say that uh, you know it, it, those great matches, and thanks for the call. We'll go ahead and let you drop off here so we don't burn up any more of your uh, long distance. But um, it, the, the, those matches – where you show true passion are few and far between nowadays. And I would have to say that, that immediately thinking about it, I'd have to go back to probably Undertaker Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25. Hogan Rock. Uh, Hogan Rock at WrestleMania 18. Flair Michaels at WrestleMania 24. And all those are WrestleManias, which might be a little bit cliched, but th those matches have happened, but they are much fewer and far between. Not they're not well, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, one, Ric one Flair, thing Terry Funk matches. Take into consideration now is they've taken the wrestlers' creativity out of their matches, and and now it's almost dictated to them what they're doing in their matches. You know, kind of like Al said, uh, wrestling by numbers. And how much fun is that? When you know you want to do this, and the people would love this, but you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through the motion. You can't be you. You're, you're handcuffed. It's not that easy to do. And for Cena to do it for so long, I mean, his passion for the business may not be shown in the way he wrestles or whatever, like as far as skill-wise, but you have to accept the way the business is and he's getting by. He's making millions of dollars a year doing what he's doing. He doesn't have to amp it up. He probably has to take also the uh, – because, you know, the guys probably love being in the ring as much as they love doing everything else. But because the being in the ring part and doing the stuff that he wants to do in the match is kind of taken from him, he probably has to live more for the pop out of the curtain. 
the pop when he does, you know, the final match, the pop when he gets the interview, the pop when he's on the microphone, and you can't go with the match as much, so like a lot of guys want to. Thank you for that call over in Idaho. Matt, uh, let's go to Vermont. Sean, you're live on the Pro Wrestling Report. How's it going, guys? Hey, Sean. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things real quick, and then I'll get going here, but I just wanted to say um, I actually do like CM Punk, especially as a heel. I think he's very uh, effective as a heel, especially with the straight-edge society um, gimmick and everything else. Um, I kind of disagree with the other caller. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys a question as far as I find that when I ask a lot of people why they don't like John Cena, I try to I ask them, what is it exactly about him that you don't like? And a lot of people can't tell me what it is. It's just a feeling they get for some reason that they don't like him. I think, and we've talked about this a lot of times, Sean, is I think a lot more people like John Cena than they will lead you to believe. I totally agree with that. I think that. You know, I think it's that it's it's almost like liking that Justin Bieber song, <laughs> Baby, Baby, Baby. There are a lot more Bieber. people who, yeah, him. There are a lot more people <laughs> that like it than will admit it. Like Party in the USA, Miley Cyrus, David Hero's favorite song. You know, it, you there, on crack. there's some attempt <laughs> embarrassment to admitting that you're a John Cena fan. Here's what's I, shocking I, to me. Grown men in the arena wearing those orange John Cena shirts, I just right? would have never thought it. I, I kind of have the analogy in my mind who John Cena reminds me of. Tim Tebow. Ooh, Tim, Mr. All-American Goody he Tebow. Wears, he, does, an orange also. He, he does this thing in your face where he's Always does the right thing and goody two shoes and there's no bad side to him and you know there is and it pisses you off because that's why no so, humans that good you know that's what I why mean? everybody's so excited that Tiger fell right I totally Who? I totally right agree with that. Oh. I mean if that's what you're going if that's the analogy oh, yeah, you're going yeah, with yeah because exactly that's it and I and, totally um I wanted to say to you guys too um, I've been a long time listener to your guys show and if I ever want to get any actual information about the wrestling world. I totally uh, listen to you guys all the time. And I wanted to say, for an obscure theme song reference, uh, one of my favorite theme songs of all time, and I don't know if you guys know this one or not, is um, All American uh, Boy by uh, uh, for the fabulous Rougeau brothers from the 80s. Done. We'll come back with that after the, our next time out. All American Boy, the uh, fabulous yeah, the, Rougeau brothers. The, uh, the little hidden uh, uh, anti-American uh French Canadian theme song. I totally got a kick out of that every time they come out waving their little American flag. But uh, <laughs> I'll get going here. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for the call, Sean. Out in Vermont, we appreciate it. And if you want to be a part of the show, the number two seven six three seven seven six or all over the world at one eight hundred nine ninety three seven seven six. Gentlemen, let's transition over and talk about WWE Raw tonight. And the most newsworthy item was the announcement of a new general manager on WWE Raw. And it was who many people speculated it would be, Brett the Hitman Hart. Bret Hart relinquishing the United States Championship and is announced as the new general manager of Raw. Let's go around the room and get comments on this, and then we'll go to our callers. Starting with you, Rashi Brown, the Hitman, is the GM. I personally don't care. Um, they spread him around everywhere. He's been there three or four months. He's, like, done everything. It's like, really? This is what they have to push to draw numbers. And that's a shame because you can't develop a wrestler in your company in, like, five or six or seven years. You have to bring Brett back to draw? Come on, man. And as great as he is, and Virgil, as great as he is, I'm not knocking him. But to rely on him to draw ratings to your company is just a shame. It's ridiculous, and it's, it's not necessary. He should be something that we're treated to once in a while, not every week. He's going to just be like one of them soon, like, mm-hmm. oh, it's Brett again. Mm-hmm. But he, you know what I'm saying. David Hero, your thoughts, the uh, Canadian hero. This is why they still need to have the guest host. No, that's ridiculous. No, also. because Brett. How about you put on good wrestling with Brett, wrestlers that want to wrestle and learn Brett, how to wrestle? Hey, Brett doesn't have the charisma to do it on his own. Wow. I know this. That's a bold statement. It's true. It's true. It's true. He Here's is, the thing. He's not good on the microphone. Do you know why the pay-per-view was so bad Sunday 
And Damien, I told you about this earlier. There was no Triple H. There was no Undertaker. There was no Shawn Michaels. They put the pay-per-view on all these young guys they have not developed yet. Isn't that what the fans have been asking for? They've been asking for it, and look what they got. They got a (laughs) bunch of crap. (laughs) They didn't ask for it like this, though. But that's what they got. But that's the the question. They wanted Kofi. They wanted the young guys. They wanted all these young guys to get a a shot, and it was not good. But were they put into roles where people would care? Was the booking good? Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. It wasn't lined up. To make the you right put, people, you put Kofi in, in a title match. The kids love Kofi. They put him in a shot against Drew McIntyre, who's hated. Okay, you had the Hart Dynasty in a sol- in which what should have been a solid match against Miz and Jericho. Give the two young kids a chance to shine and show what they can do. But well, this is my problem. Ted DiBiase Jr. To me, the Miz isn't anybody to me. Ted DiBiase so Jr. You're putting, you're putting hearts against the people that are on the same level, in my opinion. You're saying the hearts are on the same page as yes, I am. Jericho and Miz? Yes. No, the Miz. Jericho's obviously a different I'm, page. I'm not saying Jericho. I'm saying the Miz. To me, he can walk down the street and people aren't going to say, hey, that's the Miz. Or if they do, it'll say that's the dude from MTV and they won't know he's a wrestler. That's what I'm saying. He's not a star to me. As he's long as star, it, he's a star on their star. program, as long as WWE he's not is a not star in town on planet night. Earth yeah. or in the United States, as long as WWE so, is not in town, that that's exactly, exactly. what's going to happen. So he's not doing anything for me as putting the hearts in a position to look better. But here, here's to that point, and it's an interesting point, and a dynamic discussion to have. We had it recently. Stars nowadays, normal guys. Exactly. You There's are no not a normal character. guy, Ex- man. I just had this conversation all weekend. I walk through the airport. People look at me. They want to know what I do. They want to yeah. sit next to me on the airplane and talk to me. I don't want to sit next to When there's airplane. a five foot three <laughs> guy, you know, he's walking through the airport and they're like, "Hey, who's this little kid?" But he's somebody's, you right. know, world champion. Oh, you know, great point. Exactly my point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to sit next to you on the airplane, dude. No, I don't want to sit next to you either. There's no way that two of you can be in the same well, aisle on an airplane. airplane. Yeah. Please, you with, have with no idea with. Big guy luck, you always get stuck next to that dude in the back by the toilet. Dude, I said business class. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh-huh. Meathead, your thoughts? Bret Hart, the new general manager of Raw. I'm going to kind of jump on top of Rashi's points. He's been here. Since, office points. He's been here since January 4th. That's when they brought in Bret. What is Bret getting out of this? I mean, is Bret A really, that, is Brett really Bro, that itchy to be back in the I business? Know. Is he yes. really that itchy to be back? Yes. I mean, what else does he get? You got the Heart Foundation DVD, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Payday. I understand the payday thing, Come but on, didn't Dave. Brett take care of his money? I know. That's my. And if he didn't, shame, shame, shame. Because Brett looked terrible tonight. He looked horrible. He looked, I mean, he didn't put any slick in his hair, so he looked like he had a just a messy mullet. You know, I, whatever that stuff, whatever he put in his hair before matches. Real cream? What? Ever it was. You and Bret Hart use the same stuff. It doesn't matter. Mine looks better. Actually, tonight, Bret Hart was probably the most entertaining since he's been since he's been back. That angle, that promo with him and Batista was gold. Nah, I opinion. don't know about that at all. It was just force-fed. The most, enta- most entertaining Bret Hart's been since he's been back is was laying the fake cast on the table. That was entertaining to me. I mean, it lasted two minutes, but it was entertaining, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And John Lovitz tonight was awful. This is the awful. award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. 540 ESPN. Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Damian Nelson, David Hero, the man they call me dad, and Skull Crusher, Rashi Brown, here with you live tonight. On 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Lots of people discussing your conversation earlier, Rashi Brown, in the chat atmosphere at PWRShow.com. Let's go to some of those comments. And remember, you can always join the conversation live with um, the Pro Wrestling Report at PWRShow.com. And we'll start with a user by the name of uh, Poke Diggy, who says, Rashi sounds like Vince McMahon. Little guys don't draw. I never said that. I said, when I walk through airports, 
people want to know who I am and what I do. I never said little guys don't draw. You're an intimidating figure. I, I mean, that was somewhat so. implied. But to get the foot in the door with a person that's a casual fan, you have to have something different than them to make them want to see you. To call you. it a hook. Yes. So if I'm a 145-pound beer belly guy on a couch and I turn on the TV and there's a guy littler than me wrestling somebody, I don't want to see that. But if there's a dude I'm like, Dang, how do I get that big and look at this guy? I'm going to watch, maybe. To the and, point of uh, One Man Dynasty in the Chamus Girl. Now, I, said, that, right. that does not mean that a little guy can't draw. That just means I have an edge because if I'm on the poster, you're going to want to see me. But if a little guy's on the poster and the referee's next to him on the poster and they're the same size, do I want to go see that? You know what I mean? User One Man Dynasty in the Chamus Girl said, Ray draws. Also, but it's the odd little guy who but does. But draw. Ray draws why? Because he looks just like the kids, and he wears masks. Oh, Thank you. He wears uh, masks and glitter. And he's well, he's unique. Yeah, and he can fly. Thank you. But at the same token, they won't hire fifty Ray Mysterios, will they? No, because they need to keep him special. They did hire fifty Ray Mysterios. Forty-nine of them got fired. <laughs> I mean, that's when they had a cruiserweight division. As we continue talking about WWE Raw, Batista quits the long-rumored quitting of WWE. This was, as far as we know, for storyline purposes at this point. Uh, We'll have more information on this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report primetime on Friday on television. But uh, that promo was, uh, I tweeted out actually that Batista was gold. He had the, uh, it was a little reminiscent of Ric Flair's recent wheelchair days when he was sitting in that wheelchair asking for a spotlight, and yelling belligerently at Bret Hart, it was good stuff. And now, apparently, Batista, who refused to get into a match with Randy Orton, gone from WWE. David Hero, your thoughts? I thought it was the right way to send him off, not to put him through the stage. Let him go out there and quit. The stage that many people have pointed out via the Chapmosphere on Twitter that it was able to hold two cars, but not Batista. Yeah. Well, Batista's a big boy. I'm just saying. And it was a weak spot done by Super Cena. And it gives Batista a chance if he does want to come back. Yeah. (laughs) They all come back. Every one of them. Look, Meathead came back. He quit two weeks ago. He's here again. (laughs) Stop. I didn't quit at all. Meathead, your thoughts on uh, Batista tonight walking away from WWE Raw? Batista has gotten so much better since they let him become a heel. I know. He has become great. You know what? When he took out the pyro, when he said, you know, and that's something Drew McIntyre is, is probably watching and just doing wrong, you know, trying to do the slow, methodical walk. Maybe, Drew McIntyre maybe. doesn't have the same look as Batista. Right. And it, you know what? His hook is that he's Scottish. He didn't get over the first time he was he's in British, WWE. You know. He's actually Scottish. He's uh, the Scottish, first, you know. Ooh. <laughs> he was uh, in WWE the first time he was hanging out with uh, one of the other Scottish guys that were around. Is, is that the hook? That was supposed to be his hook. It doesn't work. What is the hook? The hook is how you get somebody in. I mean, my yeah. hook is I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Right. And your hook is you're wrong all the time. Right. Okay. And, you know, you've got a, a promotion and T-shirts and all that other stuff. That's your hook. Damien is the host. That's all he needs to be a hook, and he's a Justin Bieber fan. Yeah. And you're just a I big, intimidating that. dude. That's your hook, Rashi. And I'm quite handsome. Well, sure. Thanks. Other notes? Of interest from WWE Raw tonight, live on the USA Network. Uh, three people qualified for the Fatal 4-Way match, so we now know all participants. Randy Orton, Sheamus, and Edge up against John Cena for the WWE Championship at Fatal 4-Way. Sheamus. It's a shame. And what's Sheamus to took? The guy's paler than Casper. Yeah. You know, Sheamus is going to leave the Fatal 4-Way, the world champion. Ooh. Uh-oh. You ready there to goes, do that again? Yeah, there it goes. There it is. Really? There it is. All right. I wouldn't. You know what? Now I don't deny it. I don't think it'd be a. Pro- Thank you, a, Michael why. Tillman. Go ahead. Because when Triple H comes back, mm-hmm. yeah, Sheamus will be the world champion. Got some unfinished business there. Uh-huh. SummerSlam, brand new United States champion crowned tonight in our oh. truth. Who defeated? I'm sorry. Who stole it? Oh from boy. The Miz. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying our truth stole? Why are you yelling? Whoa, You're two whoa, feet away from us. Whoa. Our truth has I, had a rough upbringing. 
Don't go around saying that he say stole something. That. Why? He why? said he stole. Yeah, see, see where he goes with this. How does Kofi Kingston come to the ring? He jogs. He just jogs. No dance or nothing. Boom, boom, boom. A little bit of a shuffle kind of thing. Uh, it's a happy how bounce. Does, how does Ryan Killings come to the ring? He dances and raps. Man, and then I saw spray paint on the uh, little on the, jeans. on the Tron behind him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on, man, really? Cri- hey, crime man, time. you were gonna ask about crime time. I didn't know rappers time. spray painted walls and stuff too. And crime time is yo 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 yo. Oh, yeah. Yo, 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 Chad G and something, something, something. We are normal people, too, you know. Yeah. Well, our truth has had, obviously, his upbringing was a little tough, kind of like Booker's, you know. Let's not go there with the... <laughs> Yeah. But what I'm saying is, dude, why you got to say that our truth stole it? Full circle there. He's just a big Ms. Mark. Ms. Marquis. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Rashi Brown refuses to call I, Damien a Ms. Marquee. I Marquee. have readily admitted I am a mark for the Miz, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> we uh, had a guest host tonight, and his name was John Lovitz. I was one of few, I guess, entertained by that segment. The Marie segment? Funny. With, no, no. With, with uh, the great Kali. Kali coming out and singing and dancing. Jillian not even get a chance to open her mouth before she gets buzzed. It was I thought it was entertaining until the end where it got a little too drawn out and carried away. And Ted DiBiase getting involved and all that. It was just uh, got a, 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 a bit long at that point. But the great Kelly was, came out in a tuxedo. Right. Okay. Yeah, a scarf. With Let's Ron John. Scarf. With Ron Jan or well, <laughs> Ron Ron Ashram. I don't know what his name <laughs> whoa, is. Whoa. So what? What is the guest host supposed to be? What's his purpose on Raw? Is he like the cheerleader? I mean, the guest host was, uh, as a matter of fact, Dave Bautista was the first ever guest host of Raw, and he was supposed to be the person in charge, making matches and making the show go. But well, that's been stripped from him now because now you have Brett. What's he there for? Hart as the general manager of Raw. You know, give Brett a chance. I think he'll be okay. Are you getting a cut? No. Brett's gonna be fine. No, that's not the point, bro. We're not. We're not talking about Brett being fine. We're talking about what. We or Would you rather have see. Abraham Washington back? I don't if care. it brings back Tony Atlas? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tony got future endeavored so they could put Virgil on the payroll. Yeah, but okay, we go there with the payroll thing, but every week they have this dough to give these uh, B actors and C actors. Oh, they're not getting paid. Or their barter system. Yeah, their barter system, pimping stuff out. But these out. people are people that don't interest people that watch Ladies wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, honestly. Rashi Brown. Do they? They're not paying the... Uh, okay. The How many wrestling fans talk about John Lovett? Right. We are <laughs> right, we are right now. I know. The, the best thing Buzz he's Aldrin. ever done, in my opinion, was on an episode of Seinfeld. You know what I'm saying? Buzz Aldrin. ZZ Top. I love ZZ Top, but, but don't mix it with my wrestling. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm just going down the list for you, and I'm putting them out there. I know. You're helping me. We saw the debut of two new talents in WWE come out and attack the tag team champions, the Hart Dynasty. Jimmy and Jules Uso, the current FCW tag team champions, making their debut on Raw. They didn't have to go through NXT. Hmm. That's okay. Just they didn't even have warm-up matches. Speaking of NXT, tomorrow night, Michael Cole will uh, attempt to get a apology, a public <laughs> apology from... Daniel Bryan. Is that what they're still calling him, or is he back to being a little Brian Danielson? Um, he is, Tune for in official to purposes, Daniel out. Bryan, yeah. yeah. So that was all for tonight. Overall, pass, fail. Let's go around the room. Starting with you, Rashi. Yeah, That's Rashi. the only two options we have. Pass, fail. Fail. David Hero. Not pleased. DHHS. Meet it. Ah, mediocre at best. So that's a lukewarm... Eh. Let's go back to the phone you, you line. Know what? I, I will say this. The main event for tonight's match was better than the pay-per-view last night. Absolutely. Let's go to JB out in Virginia on line three. JB, you're live. Not Nashville? Hey, how y'all doing? Jay Bizzle. We're great, baby. Uh, that's what's up. Uh, I just want to comment on Raw. Uh, um, first off, I was glad to see uh, Brad Hart um, as GM because, to me, he was a whole lot of better than uh, the previous GMs they had recently in uh, Vicky Guerrero and <clears throat> excuse me. You're upset and, uh, about it, I know. Just let it out. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Because uh, to me, um, I know y'all talking about Vicky. I understand the whole thing with the whole uh, Eddie Guerrero thing. It's just that the kind of heat she was getting was like going away. And I felt like it kind of took away from the show. But overall tonight, I felt like the um, – <clears throat> The switch in the U.S. title match is pretty uh, interesting. Uh, it was a little bit of uh, fresh right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing that um, I wanted to talk about was um, the main event. I thought that was strong. And I'm just hoping, like, you know, WWE just, you know, shy away from the, the, the cheesy uh, guest host skits because it kind of makes me, as a wrestling fan, look like an idiot. When you know I have a casual, you know, friend yeah. of mine that it, you get what I'm saying. You you feel ashamed to let him watch what you're watching, right? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah, you you're like, oh yeah, come on, man, I was watching football games. Sit down, man. Is that the guy? From and then you Saturday try to hurry up. You, you try to hurry up and kick him out of your house so you can finish watching wrestling, but you know they <laughs> yeah. want to hang around longer. Yeah, that's the guy that said, uh, yeah, that's the ticket. Acting <laughs> brilliant. Thank you for your call. JB out in Virginia. Let's get through the uh, go to the rest of our callers here as we come on the end of the show. Ricardo down in Houghton, Texas. Ricardo, our second caller from Houston. You're live. Yo, what up, guys? Yo, what, what up? up? Love the show. Love interactive. Love prime time. You guys are great. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, uh, one uh, more of a, st- a question I have. Uh, me, me and my group of friends, there's like five or six of us that watch wrestling. And we think the big problem with TNA is that a lot, most of the, a lot of the wrestling and most of the promos, with the exception of Mr. Anderson and uh, Anderson and Jay Lethal, are pretty sloppy and not well done with comparison to the WWE. And that's why we can't stand watching it. I mean, when you see Sting come out and wrestle in a T-shirt. I know, man. Come on, for real? He's like Ric Flair in uh, uh, late WCW days. It, it really, it really like, because we really value our time, and we don't want to waste our time to sit there and watch. <laughs> we really, we don't want to sit there and watch sloppy wrestling and sloppy promos done by TNA. <laughs> and I wish they would get they, they have the talent. I just I don't know what if it's the promoters or the owners that push these wrestlers to hey go out and compete, make it a good match, a good promo. I honestly. Don't know what it is with them, but it's just really well, sloppy it, and not well done. It, it, it's, it's, and I'll let Rashi speak to this after I lay the foundation here. Thank you for that call, Ricardo, down in Houston. But you're either completely produced, meaning somebody's telling you exactly what to say, you're given talking points, or you're let to just say whatever you think needs to be said. It's easy to see the difference in the final product for each of those three options. But Rashi, what is better? If there is a better amongst those three scenarios, clearly WWE very produced, very heavily produced, very scripted. TNA to a degree for some talents more than others, Mm -hmm. and uh, you know there are times where there are organizations out there where you just sort of go out there, hype your match. I I think you should be given a chance to do what you're supposed to do on your own. If if you can't do it and you know it and they know it, then I guess them giving you bullet points is cool, but I don't like someone telling me what I would say to somebody mm-hmm. because I know what I'd say to somebody. And also, if the crowd really hated or really liked something I was saying and me being the program moron, I can't stop the pause for the crowd's reaction. I have to keep going. Yeah. It's so you're a fan of the bullet points here. Here's a rough no, idea. No, I'm a fan of give me the mic. Do you want to go 100%? Yeah, just let me go. Because Please, I don't know will. what I want to say. And there may be one lady in the front row I want to mess with, and I can get my point across by using her as an example. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's funny that you say that, too, because within the WWE, as far as we all understand, they don't want you don't working towards the crowd. acknowledge the crowd. Right, you're working we the TV. We don't care about the right, 20,000. Right, care about you're working the, the 5 million. Yeah, you're working the TV. We're... As, you know, the people on TV or the people that are watching TV actually love to watch people interact with the crowd. Ric Flair going, shut up, fat boy. I, I had I this, discussion, this discussion with fans this weekend. And mm-hmm. that's the exact, we all, we all say the same thing. Why do I want to go to your live arena event when I watch your TV show and the crowd's sitting on their Sitting hands. on their hands. 
Yeah. It does nothing to excite me at all. And I got to go back to one of those last callers, you know, and Damien will probably uh, dispute me on this, but I don't think Vicky was getting as much heat as everybody says because every time I'm one that watches crowds, and, you know, we're talking about this, when Vicky would come out the, you know, excuse me, the booze, I think half of them are fake. Microphone. They're in all or they're piped pumped in. They're pumped yeah. in. They're all they're all fed in because again I watch crowds. I listen for the voice and I watch the faces. They I don't agree. match. You see a lot of people going and just and, looking. And, and and they used to do that back in the day. Well, that was a Goldberg thing. I mean, oh, I meant back in the early eighties. Yeah. Okay. Ninety four sure. hours of TV in one sure. day. But I'm saying, you know, Vicky doesn't get as much crowd heat as people say she does. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some. I if, see a sign here and there. If you're, if you're there. there, you'll know. But if you're not there, you won't. Right. It's all canned. Like I said, Damien, Damien disputes it. I won't dispute it. Okay. I'll tell you, it's, it's just not true. Oh, because yours is an opinion. We're all no, giving opinions. it's just opinions. not true. I, I, I happen to have a tuned ear, given my uh, Oh, my please. God, man. I happen to have been a disc jockey for how many years, and I know how to listen okay. to music can, in the background. How many live see... events have you produced for thousands of people? Oh, so let's, let's not pull out resumes. So I can tell. I'm not how many people have point. you knocked out with one punch? Exactly. What point does that mean? me more apt to speak about audio than it does to speak about no, wrestling. Because you're you're with you I'm you said saying, in fact. I'm simply saying it is certainly not piped in in any live event I've been to the Vicky Booing. Not. No, they don't pipe it into the live That's event. That's what he's They pipe it into the television. No, this is, I, I'm also talking about the television. When you're watching the television, I'm just not because saying anything about TV. That's, you're that's what I'm event. talking about. TV, you, absolutely they do it. I'm talking about if you're watching Raw on TV mm-hmm. and the booze, the booze are louder than they are in the audience. Absolutely. How many times did you watch AWA on ESPN Classics with the 60 people in the audience well, we, at the Riverboat, and they would pump in the, the applause like there's 30,000 people there. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. Let's get to our final caller of the evening from Milwaukee. Fox, you're live. Hello, Fox. You're live on the Pro Wrestling uh, Report. How you guys doing? Man? Hey, Fox. I've uh, been down with you guys at Public Access Channel 14, man. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't like the new GM we work on, man. I'm still not understanding why they just didn't make the voice of Raw, the GM of Raw also, and good old JR. Well, a lot of people were, that? thank you, Fox, for that call. A lot of people were speculating that it would be Jim Ross. I think we pretty much put that rumor to rest Vince a couple of Vince McMahon will not put JR back on TV no, again. No, he won't. That sucks. This whole GM thing is so stupid. The yeah, whole but, but, guess everything is stupid. But, but here's Teddy, a, Teddy Long is a GM on SmackDown. It's always worked. I think he's that's a great spot for him, and he does a good job there. Here's the thing: I don't think WWE knew last week who the guest host, who the GM was going to be, because no. they did not make a big deal out of the fact that they were going to be announced. It was an afterthought that they were going to announce a guest, a general manager, rather. So, Bret Hart may be the GM now, and they announced it. Let's see what's going on four weeks from now. There may not be a GM. Maybe again. he'll trade it for his belt back. Who knows? Perhaps. <laughs> maybe though. Maybe, maybe he'll get... this doesn't pay as much as the U.S. champ. <laughs> We want to make sure you tune in to the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive and all-new show Wednesday. Uh, more of your comments, lots of feedback on WWE Linda K. Over the there? Limit. Linda K. will be hosting that show again. Oh, my goodness. And then Friday, a brand-new episode of PWR Primetime. We take a unique look at the Pro Wrestling domestic live event business. Some interesting stories to be told between the two companies. So be sure to tune in on demand at PWRshow.com to both those shows. Thank you for your patience and our delay this evening. We'll be back with you again next Monday Go night. Celtic. Monday night, a special Monday. Memorial Day edition. Wait a the minute. The Pro Wrestling Report Live. You get time and a half. It's okay. Oh, uh, next okay. Next Monday, live right here on 540 ESPN. So thank you for tuning in. For Dave Hero, the cause, the man they call me dead, and the skull crusher, Rashi Brown, this is Damian Nelson saying we'll see you next Monday from the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com.